watching full penetration. <laughs> Man on man. Can we just for a second, though, like, we don't see boobs like this much anymore. This that you're asking who doesn't love tits? The gays. The gays don't love tits? I've had more gay guys touch my boobs than straight guys, probably. A lot of guys go, <laughs> I still think I'm gay. <laughs> Next time I go to Atlanta, we're going to go to these underground titty fights. Really? One's in a folding chair and one's standing up. They're topless and they slap each other in the face with their tits. Oh my God! That's yeah, they're, that. getting, they're getting bopped around. Bro. Would you feel like you knew if somebody was a murderer? You've been around enough people. Do you feel like you know? It made me paranoid. I hired these new cleaning people. It was a guy and a girl. And I catch this weird argument on my ring camera. Turns out he had murdered that lady, stabbed her to death, rolled her up in a carpet, left her there, took her keys, her car, came to my house as an alibi, and then... Guys are wearing, like, tight pearl necklaces. No. I want to hate it, but I, 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 I kind of don't hate it, man. Yeah. It's like very Nashville fuckboy. There's like a whole. Do you have a picture? Yeah. There's like uh, there's like a Like MGK whole, style? Bro, there's a whole like fucking new genre of like retro country fuckboy chic. It's fucking that's, gay. It's fucking gay, it's dude. It's fucking gay. Yeah. Some guys look good femme though. Like I don't particularly like a feminine man, but some guys like that Harry they're, Styles. He, you think he pulls yeah, it off? They're trying He's to gay. be like he might be. To be like masculine with feminine like fucking uh, There's a lot of fan fiction with Harry Styles. You know what fan fiction is? So women like are super into erotica, but then they really want the ones that are really into it. They'll find real celebrities or they'll take uh, trilogies like Harry Potter or the Lord of the Rings and they'll take the main characters and make them have a mm. homoerotic love story. So um, they just make them gay. They make them super gay. So like Harry Potter and uh, what's his name? Um, Malfoy. Malfoy. Oh, yeah. Malfoy. Floyd? Malfoy, Malfoy. Malfoy. Um, they've done Samwise Gamgee and well, they were just gay though. Yeah, but they just get really specific, and then Harry Styles and like the One Direction dude. You start butt fucking. It's, it's so it's got a really big community. commit to the scene. <laughs> commit. Yeah, it's weird. I was. I don't believe your character. It's some women are super into the gay stuff. I don't personally like it. I recently Maybe started either. getting into the, into the erotica shit. stuff, and you'd be surprised at how much gay content is in women. Erotica. Well, like guys erotica. watch lesbian pornography, yeah. so I imagine women, in, to some degree, are enjoying like, yeah, it. Whatever do you mean? <laughs> I like that's watching, illegal in this. I state. like watching full <laughs> penetration, man on man. It's one of my favorite things <laughs> to ever happen during the whole like uh, when the Tiger King was a thing for eleven minutes, and he he his whole thing was like, well, you watch porn, don't you? Do you like them when the men have a little dangalang or a big dangalang? Well, then you're gay. I was like, it's like sitting here going, no, no. I just wish I had a big dick, well, dude. You know, I'm literally. trying to get him out of jail right now. No, for real. <laughs> yeah, we had we interviewed him from prison on but the that pod. bitch Carol Baskins fucking staying in the way. Or? Well, I don't know if she has much to do with it. More so that just the FBI is super corrupt and they just stacked a bunch of charges on him. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's in for murder. Or what uh, is he murder in for? for hire, but really what they really did to him was just stack a bunch of animal charges on him that that you they don't have the the agency to be able to levy those kind of yeah, they charges did, on people. They did the mafia thing on him where fucking the the what do you call that? There's the, fifty fucking uh charges. It's, it's up uh, the Rico thing. Yeah. Is that was they didn't Rico him, him, but they what they do is like you it's, it's similar. It's, you're right. It's called stacking charges, and it's like, all right, well you yeah. beat the murder case. Congrats, Al Capone. But we convicted you for uh, your taxes, so 20 years. It's like, whoa, everybody gets a year in jail for taxes. Right. Oh, no, it's up to 20. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's crazy so. about it? I got a funny uh, Al Capone story. Al Capone threw the mayor of Chicago down the stairs at City Hall in the 20s in front of the police commissioner, and he actually had handpicked that mayor, I believe. But uh, it's just uh, one of those things that's an interesting story, and a lot of people know. No camera phones back then. People mm -hmm. just living their lives, man. Just living in the moment. Just dudes staying being in dudes. the moment. Just dudes being dudes. We man. just got back from Chicago for Street Gonzo, and uh, that city is weird, okay? All the fucking white people there suck, mm -hmm. and all the black people are super cool. That was my experience because the white people there were, well, I guess I should preface it with, we were asking people 
is Chicago really that dangerous? Yeah. And all the white people were like, well, no, it's actually nice. And I would ask people about the South Side and they're like, yeah, yeah, support the South Side. It's great. Yeah. You know, they were scared. They're like scared mm -hmm. of either the gangs, which I, I don't know if the gangs really give a shit, but I think more so they're scared of looking like racist or something because the South Side's black. Well, that's the thing. You know like, I mean? That's where the whole Jesse Smollett thing, nobody that had ever even been to Chicago for a day was like, so there was Republican white guys hanging out. And Five. 17 feet of snow. With a noose? At three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> While the subway break. was open. Yeah. Every white person that still lives in Chicago after the last 20 years of politics is so cucked. There's just no way that anybody's like, oh, I'm going to find me a black guy. Like, <laughs> what Bunch world? of pussies and liberal white women, which is, for those of you that don't know, those, that's the worst demographic of person on the planet. <laughs> Seriously. We interviewed this lady, and uh, I was just, all I asked was, hey, we're from Texas. Um, mm -hmm. We're asking people in Chicago if it's really that dangerous. And she immediately was like, that's what Republicans say. Chirac is what Republicans say. Started poking me in the chest. And Spike Lee made a movie. Literally. Called and, Chirac. And the term was actually coined by a rapper in 2009, 2010. I, I forget what his name was. Chief Keith. No, actually, he wasn't the one that coined it. But he did kind of create drill music. But regardless, I hope that that lady gets fucking beat up on public transit and thrown into the street because she's a piece of shit. Chances are she will. Yeah. These white liberal ladies out in Brooklyn, they got to keep their head on a swivel nowadays, she was, man. She was like, yeah, well, uh, I just put my headphones in and I just mind my own business. You, okay, yeah, put your headphones in in Chicago. You're going to get That's punched terrifying. in the back of the fucking head, you dumb bitch. That's mm. so scary. Whatever, it's a soft spot for me. It pissed me off. We were just editing it. And then it's like, how Tender do you spot for me? How do you think that you're helping anyone too by lying about it instead of acknowledging the violence? You can't. That's exactly. step one is just acknowledging the issue. There's they can't. They can't, though, because they've been wrong about so much. I mean, these are people that genuinely, and I genuinely believe this, would have much rather we died than for them to actually have to admit that they were wrong yeah. about supporting the, the, the policies that they supported over the last four years. It's fucking crazy. And, and to, the, to contrast that, the, all the black people we talked to were like, fuck yeah, South Side's dangerous. Yeah. And we were talking to people about gun laws and shit like that. And, and this one guy's like, I am going to buy a gun. Somebody stole my catalytic converter and I'm, I'm going to buy a gun so that I can be safe and yada, yada. And I was like, well, what do you think about gun laws? It's hard to get a gun, right? And he's like, yeah, it's fucking impossible. I'm like, so gun laws are only hurting law abiding citizens. And he's like, duh. Yeah. Huh. So I said, so they, they don't do anything. And he was, oh yeah. Look at the numbers. Yes, you're right. Yeah, it's it, obviously. I was like, how do, you, how do you not, have you not thought about this at all? I, I don't even take them seriously anymore, Gary. When they go on their gun stuff, I'm sitting here going like, yeah, no, you're right. We should make murder illegal. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, he was being authentic. I think he was just drunk, but you know, it's, it's. So you can't carry, like there's no open carry or a CC in Chicago? It's very difficult from what I understand to get accepted to get a, a concealed carry. It's not like in Texas where you can just have a gun. Only Constitutional state, carry? Only the state. Cops. I believe the only people that can conceal carry in Chicago are employees of the state. That's just so I, wild. For the city of Chicago? Not the whole so. state of Illinois. No, but J.B. Pritzker is the governor, so it could be. If only we had a producer that could verify this information. <laughs> oh, and back to the pearls. I don't like that at all. You don't like that at all? I don't like that at all. Uh, there's a guy named J.B. Copeland. That's not the look. Look up J.B. Copeland. Um, and this is like this whole kind of retro cowboy, hipster, metrosexual like thing that's going on. What I think you're talking about is the urban cowboy look, right? Is that what this mm -hmm. is? I mean, I think yeah, that's the things what it change. Is. Nope. I kind of dig the white trash look, though, and maybe yep, maybe true. that's just, that's you it. know, I wasn't loved as a child, but... Is this white trash look? Is this oh, yeah, for sure. That's you think that's white trash? I, I don't know so. if that's white trash. Really? I do. White trash is, you're shopping at Walmart. It's like white trash, with but with money. Like cosplaying white Rich trash. white trash. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. It's like cosplaying white trash. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. It is. No, you're right. It's or like, LARPing. Yeah, you're, you're, you're LARPing, LARPing as a... Trailer you, know what, exactly. you know what it is? It's the, uh, it's, the, it's the phenomenon of the culture vulture. How for all these years, all these, you know, suburban white kids have been stealing black rap culture and like hip hop culture and ghetto now culture. pop. And now they're like, oh... We've stolen enough from all these black people. <laughs> Let's go and appropriate white trash culture because that's our own skin color and it's more uh, acceptable mm -hmm. in society. Maybe it's accept or maybe that's just like where the aesthetic has gone. Like now it, it appears like um, 
like hip hop has lost its kind of footing in American pop culture. And it seems to be country is starting to become that. You start seeing Shabuzi and these are the summer songs and stuff like that. Um, so like this, this is just the new thing, I guess. I don't know, dude. As I sit here with a corduroy fucking. <laughs> Your suede, on, yeah. suede jacket. My su yeah, this isn't corduroy at all. Do nah. I even know what words are? No. Yeah. Dude, do I look gay? Or fabrics. Do you, do you look, look gay? gay? No. Why do you? I can see. I can see you. I can see you being. I gay. wasn't sure uh, if you were going to come shirtless or not, and I was like, it's either going to be shirtless or a really deep V. So that's why I have all my boobs yes, out right I'm now. Hey, sure <laughs> like, what are you I talking about? I got to match the energy. Can we just for a second though, like, <laughs> we don't see boobs guest? like this much anymore. This <laughs> no. is, these are great boobs. Um, yeah, <laughs> Gary, you ever seen boobs like this, like uh, out when you're on the street? Man? Well, no, I bought this and I, I thought it was much higher. And I was like, the only place I can wear Boy, were you wrong? I thought, I thought she was going to be like, I bought these and I love them. <laughs> no, no, the top. And I was like, I can only wear this on a podcast because I I can't do this. They're really, well, hey, they're spectacular. I love tits. <laughs> and ass. Who doesn't, man? Uh, gays. <laughs> well, that's just not true. They love ass. No, they, they, they love... Oh, I thought you were asking who doesn't love tits. The gays. The gays don't love tits? I don't think so. They do not sexually, though. Gay oh. guys, I've had more gay guys touch my boobs than straight guys, probably. Well, because it's not sexual assault. <laughs> There's just a lot of guys going, this bitch still thinks I'm gay. <laughs> hey, by the way, I'm gay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gay, too. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, dude, everybody like just to shake our gay hands like across Chuck, the nipples. Chuck and Larry, do you remember that movie? Oh, yeah. And they were when the gay couple, a... and then Jessica Biel's getting undressed and all. Yeah, it's super. What a <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> Jessica yeah. Biel, what a You guy. converted me. Oh, no, now I'm straight. <laughs> I just couldn't resist you. <laughs> <laughs> so Gary, man, tell yes. the people what makes you so scary. Uh, I'm just fucking out of my mind. That's a nickname I've gotten from different friend groups for the past probably 15 years. Just not connected. I just keep <laughs> getting that nickname. I think it's mostly because it rhymes and I'm out of my fucking mind. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Yeah. What's the elevator pitch? Why should people watch Scary Gary? Go. The, the Street show? Gonzo. Yeah. My show? Hey, I have a show called Street Gonzo. Friday, 5 p.m. <laughs> uh, drink it, bros. Watch it. <laughs> so this is what happened. We go all over the place. We cover stories, events. We go to cities. It's man on the street combined with gonzo journalism, like what Hunter S. Thompson did, where you kind of live the story. You figure it out as you go. It's subjective. It's through the eyes of me and Joel, my producer. It's really more so through his eyes, actually. It's like he's following me around. You get to just follow me around while we just go do whatever, uh, you know, whether it be interviewing people about politics or going to Chicago and asking people if it's actually that dangerous and then white women telling you that you're like <laughs> a piece of shit or whatever. So it's good stuff. And it's like a vlog with man on the street peppered in. Dude, it's like, it's like a, it's like a fucking, you're in the cockpit of a jet, like a, like a Boeing 747 and it's going down and there's a fire Plus in the it's back. Boeing, yeah. There's terror. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you just, you got to pilot it safely into the ocean but somebody's holding a gun to your head and you mm. don't know how to fly a plane. That's what it feels like. It's out of control. We don't really prepare very much. I'm fucking wildly bipolar and addicted to speed. So, <laughs> what, I mean, I think Great it kind content. of sells itself. Yeah. You know? yeah. If you want to watch it, a it, 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 it's, it's It's a nonstop action showcase. It's a lot of fun. Gary Gone Wild out here <laughs> in the streets. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the, the, the hock to a phenomenon, I imagine, is making it everybody wants to come up to you and, and, and have a conversation. Yeah, Oh my god, dude! You put the light on the camera, and then it's it's what do you call that? Flees moths, to a moths light to or a flame. Yeah, yeah, that one. Flees, flees. Yeah. To, where, yeah. Where'd you grow up? <laughs> yeah, moths dude, to I a fucking, flame. <laughs> Dayton, Ohio, actually. It's a big free, heroin flee, town. Flees dude. to a trailer. No. Flees to a trailer. <laughs> flees to shit. That's what it really is. But yeah, it's cool, man. I like what we're doing. It's the first thing that I've done that's stuck. If that makes sense. I've been mm -hmm. doing man on the street shit forever. I've been doing podcasts forever, and it finally the sauce is going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sauce is the boss. <laughs> the sauce is the boss. <laughs> so speaking of sauce, I heard a rumor that said you are immune to chlamydia. Yeah. How does one first find out that they're wait, immune? Wait, 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 wait. What was that one more time? He's immune to chlamydia. I swear to God. <laughs> People think it's like a fucking bit. I don't do bits. As I told you guys before we started recording, the only rule of my show and really what I do in general is... I try as hard as I can. No fake, nothing fake. We do it all real. And uh, the way I found out I was immune to chlamydia was by having sex with a woman who had chlamydia. And I didn't get chlamydia. But it happened only once? 
Well, it probably happened like hundreds of times, <laughs> but I imagine that that's a pretty good litmus test. Is, is it possible? Well, no, because it's a lot harder t- for a girl to give something to a guy generally. Well, I got checked the other day. I didn't have any STDs. <laughs> is, it, is it possible you've just had so much chlamydia that your body's like immunized? No, that's what I'm chlamydia? saying. I've gotten it like six inoculated. times. You've gotten it like six times. Uh, somewhere between three and six, probably. So then you're def- So now you think you've you've developed an immunity to chlamydia? Yeah, and if you chlamydia? look it up, Delco, you've you developed can find a chlamydia, it. bro. You should have your blood. Donated and checked by science. There's a lot of money. And turn I, it into a pill. Uh, you can huh? just look up uh, if you can develop a natural immunity. I'm not saying I'm 100 percent immune. I've de- developed an immunity to it. Yeah, I've got a strong immune system. <laughs> Indestructible. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think you do against the other ones? I mean, I haven't gotten anything in years, bro. You might be just immune, <laughs> like to the sexually zombie, transmitted like, disease. It's like the zombie movies, and there's one person that's the main <laughs> character, like The Last I'm of Us, and you're the little girl in The Last of Us that they're trying to save for humanity. Gary, yeah. Google says no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, we don't believe the fake news, Google yeah. mainstream media. Yeah, that's yeah. all. You gotta ask Gronk. That's all big chlamydia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big chlamydia is gonna come after me. Yeah. No, I, I'm actually serious, though. There's no way that I've... I don't wear condoms. There's no way I've had sex with as many women as I had without getting something. You know, it I respect that, sense. man, because then you're not really having sex with the person. You're having sex with the condom. The, yeah. You know? Con- I can't even keep my dick hard with a condom on. Yeah. I think that's in your head. I think for it's sure. in the head, yeah. From, for sure. For most men. Man, condoms kind of gross, man. Why would, he, why would he wear a condom? Well, I'm, well listen, I, mean, I, I advocate for s- being safe, mm. but I think that you can do a lot of things to like help a guy if he's struggling mm-hmm. and like make the condom hot. You know what I mean? Like, no, like, I don't get no, it. No, because <laughs> you, like, you just incorporate. No, you incorporate more oral while you're doing it. And with a condom on? Yeah, no, before and then yeah. after. And first of all, the only time you ever get a blowjob with a condom on is a prostitute, and <laughs> or that some porn kind of does work. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What's the line, man? I mean, you're clearly if a girl's like, I got chlamydia, you're like, not a deal breaker. What would be a deal breaker for you? Uh, that's a good question. That's a deal breaker. <laughs> I guess a deal breaker would be, well, if they're. Well, let's not think about it. Let's yeah. just go. Here we go. Ready? Fucking let's rapid fire. First AIDS. thing comes to your mind. All right. Okay. That's a good. Syphilis. Yes or no? Well, no, I'm not going to have sex with somebody that has syphilis. <laughs> Gangrene. Is that contagious through sex? I don't know. No, it's not. No, then yeah, I'm down. It's like you're like saying diabetes. <laughs> diabetes. Sure. <laughs> Leukemia. Yes. No one. Charity work. Herpes. Yes. Nice. <laughs> nice. I'm not going to discriminate. Well, it depends which, like, like A herpes or B herpes, right? Well, if they well, don't no. have an outbreak, you can have sex no, with somebody so with it herpes. Actually, Is that really no, how that works? Nowadays, if you're on medicine, it's actually undetectable, just like HIV. What? Mm-hmm. Impossible so to give, in, from, impossible to detect or, or or give to someone else. Really? Yeah. You know, also, you it's almost impossible to get HIV from a woman. It's mm-hmm. primarily uh, transferred through semen and blood. Mm. So you'd have to really fuck somebody hard. Bad yeah. look mm-hmm. for Magic Johnson. Yeah. Dude, Bad look. That's what I'm saying. Also, Charlie Sheen. They both probably well, Charlie, got fucked well, Charlie's by Charlie's whole apparently was... Uh, he was uh, he was straight when he was sober, and then he loved him some of the troons when he got a little fucking buzz going. You know what's crazy is uh, meth and heroin both I think turn people gay because turn of them? the addiction. You think? Yeah, and they can't it, pay for it. Well, <laughs> that's what they're like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I think that's that, not that, capitalism. Look at turns that. people gay. Stressed yeah. out, dude. Huh? He's standing up, hands on his head. Yeah, he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my God, dude, all this misinformation. <laughs> this is what, this is what <laughs> happens when you invite Gerard on the show. What did I do? I had all these notes. Get to it. Okay, well, hey, no, hard fine. reset. No, you're fine. Speaking of hard. <laughs> Speaking of hard. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, no, now that's, a, I don't, whatever. No, I, is hate, so is AIDS a deal breaker then? If it's undetectable, is that a deal breaker? I don't think well, it is. Well, I was watching a thing. A this breaker. is going to sound crazy. If, if you can't, if it's, if people. Undetectable and you can't transmit it as long as you're on the medication. AIDS is on the way out. You would knowingly no. fornicate with someone who was HIV positive? If it was showing up positive, that's not 
obviously a good idea. You, no one should do that. But if it's not showing up, then they don't have it to give to you. It's interesting. There was this doctor that was doing a podcast and he was saying that it's actually in modern times, it's better to contract HIV now than it is to get diabetes. Because if you get diabetes, it automatically takes five to seven years off of your life. But because of medical advances, AIDS doesn't take or HIV doesn't even turn into AIDS and it doesn't have any impact on, on longevity. I think what's which very is crazy. funny about that is that you looked at me when you were talking about diabetes, no, and you looked at him when you were talking about AIDS. <laughs> You're just looking for things that are not there. <laughs> it's like, it's because I look like I'm one of the fucking, uh, who are the guys that did the What YMCA? doctor said it was worse to have, well, well they are saying like diabetes. The village bu guys. I did see something, mm -hmm. all jokes aside, where... Um, the village guys. I did see something That's where... That's why she looked at me when she said, because I looked like one of the vi village people. Or village people, yeah, yeah. 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 With that mustache, she comes on. He's like, what, did you think I was gay? No, no, Gary, nobody would. The, uh, I did see something where <laughs> Alzheimer's and, like, dementia seem to be very closely linked to diabetes. It's, it's called like, type 3 diabetes everywhere else in the world except for the U.S. And you true? know why yes. that is? Because, because big sugar. our fucking food supply is complete poison. Mm -hmm. yeah. All of it. It's so bad. Right. Wait, is that true? It's called type 3 diabetes? Yeah, yeah, they're calling it type 3 diabetes except for here. And that is because of big agriculture and, you know, everyone's like paying big each other off. Big agriculture, big, and then big pharmaceutical pharma. companies. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, all that shit's all linked together. B big tobacco back in the day. Mm. I mean, yep. they all work in conjunction, you know. Yeah, I've been on a rant about big pharma <laughs> recently. I never really cared much. Uh, RFK has made a lot of that stuff. And then I started realizing, like, there's no titties anymore, man. Like, titties are gone. Titties are gone, what the fuck dude. What are you talking about? The, I guess I'm not speaking into the <laughs> oh, microphone. Oh, because of a... He Titty, they're just, they're gone. Like, when you walk around Austin, when you walk around town, like, when we were younger, man, like, there were boobs everywhere. Like, lunch ladies had fucking big old they boobs. There was breast assist. Village every, feeders. It was, everybody's worried about, like... <laughs> Milk oh, missiles. Yeah. They were everywhere, man. You know, there was that chick that everybody thought was, like, you know, kind of chunky or something like that. You go to the pool party, it was just all fucking titty under there, yeah, bro, and yeah. they're all gone. Now the only people it's with gone. tits are black women. It's gone. They still got tits, black women. All of them? Yeah. When uh, uh, Next time I go to Atlanta, we're going to go to these underground titty fights. Really? Yeah. Is that... Would you like to hear more? I would. Yes. Okay. Let, me, let me let you know about it. Paint a picture, bud. So there's these underground titty fights in Atlanta. I saw footage. They're in quite literally a Fight Club-esque location. Delco, can you please uh, pull up? I have, I, I have, no, <laughs> I <got> no. it. <laughs> you're not going to find this on online. I have video of it on my phone. Really? I can, I can, well, show you. Gary, the first rule of underground tit fight club. There it is. I That's thought it. this was a joke. So look, let me tell you. So they, they put these people in under there. It's underground. It's like an underground party. You know, the, the cement walls, it's like in a basement, like, you know, but a big basement of a warehouse or something. And it's a, these black women generally sitting, one's in a folding chair and one's standing up, they're topless and they slap each other in the face with their tits. Do I know how you win the fight? No, <laughs> but I enjoyed watching it. If and you, I want to find like one when I go slap. there next time. If you don't dress up like Calvin fucking Candy for that event. With the fake tits. You are missing out on the greatest <laughs> fucking clip of all time. Dude. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I ripped my fake tits. I gotta get them. I gotta, Those are expensive I gotta them too. No, they're like 150 bucks. Oh really? Yeah, they weren't. That, they weren't that expensive. I'm gonna get some black ones though for this. It's Atlanta, you know, black city. <laughs> Walk up there with that long cigarette holder, like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> you How do you do? <laughs> you had my curiosity. <laughs> now you have my oh, interest. There we go. <laughs> oh, my, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's the footage right there. Oh my god. That's yeah, they're getting, they're getting bopped around. Wow. Ouch. Ouch. Are you not entertained? Dude, I'm a real journalist. This is what I do. I show people Boom! what the world really has to offer. That would actually make slap fighting take off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, look, here's what I want to do. Do you guys know Dana White by chance or somebody that we could get in touch with Dana yeah, White? Somebody, yeah. needs, somebody needs to show Paige Man's this. Dude. <laughs> 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 they have I want to get Dana natural, White in on though. this. He could make a fucking entire, you know, championship out of this. Bro, this is nuts. But then there would there be different categories oh. for enhanced versus natural because yeah, the enhancements look, are harder. Too, like, fake tits would be like harder. using steroids. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that would be legal. But you're gonna have conferences like <laughs> A cup, B cup, C cup, D cup, double D. I don't know if you could really even have A. 
You couldn't or have B. A or B. You could, you could definitely I could, I could, you could be in the arena. <laughs> Underground pillow fights. <laughs> With uh, those cowboy pillows right there. Sweater <laughs> pillows. Yeah, uh, clearly they don't have weight classes, though, because that big <laughs> is putting it all on that little girl. <laughs> Look, uh, let me just put it this way. Black women are winning every single one of these. There's no way that they're not. Yeah. They've got the fucking... Bazoongas. We finally found a, a sport that a troon wouldn't be better than a woman. Good at. God, dude. That It's really aggressive. Yeah, I love it. There seems <laughs> to be a strategy here. Like, you got to tap out or are they trying to knock them out? Dang. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I don't know the rules. I haven't She's investigated it yet. Yeah, it, I, I feel like she was like trying to make it look like it was her breast assistance, but I was, she was shoulder busting that yeah, girl. I, I, I was watching one of them. I did a deep dive mm. naturally. Mm -hmm. Very curious you are person. a journalist, journalist, real journalist. Mm -hmm. And, uh, some of them I saw, they're getting in there. They're almost getting uh, not just shoulder. They're maybe get a little elbow in there. Oh, little action. Really? I can imagine that real fights break out at these that get out of control. Oh huh. yeah. And that's what I want to see. Mm. So funny. Yeah. There's some, so yeah, that's uh, I thought you guys would like that. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I You're didn't welcome. know. Yeah. There's I some dead I don't know if I'm saying it. thank you yet, but yeah. <laughs> I Dang, learned, don't learned mention something that. new anytime. Uh, so are there any new developments with the Rainy Street, the Rainy Street Ripper? Is that what they're calling him? Yeah, that's what they're calling him. This if, is if, the, if, if I was on the edge of my seat on the airplane ride. I watched it on the flight here and I knew people were watching. I'm like, they're like what the hell is she watching in public? Um, I thought you were going to die. So a couple times. Weird about Wait, this. real quick, Gary, for people that don't know, myself included, what is the Rainy Street Ripper? So allegedly, it's th there's a man or woman or potentially even a transgender that has been drugging and luring, drugging men at bars on Rainy, luring them to the edge of the water at the end of Rainy Street and then killing them. And some are by, you know, there's some people, some of them have like blunt force trauma. Some of them have, you know, some of them were drowned. Some of them were, one guy was shot. There's a couple of different uh, methods of death, but they're all bodies being found at the lake, around the lake, in the lake, etc. Lady Bird and Lake? People, yeah, and people are saying uh, that there's a serial killer or a ring of people doing this that could potentially be connected to the smiley face killings in St. Louis, Chicago. What are those? That's a whole other a whole other, a whole thing. other episode. You'd have to look, look up uh, Kevin Gannon, smiley face killing. It's a whole conspiracy that there's this um, network of killers working together that are that are was Garth people. Brooks at the at the head? <laughs> he actually, yeah, Tom Segura, I think, was talking about that. So, is it a similar really? demographic? Did you know that? Or you I did not know that. Is I, that are no you joke? Serious? Garth Brooks, yeah. There, Tom Segura had a clip about that, like a joke. Dude, what's going on here, man? Are you uh, in? On, are you on the inside? Uh, <laughs> um, shit, he's on. So the the fucking um, the rainy street ripper shit that we've been doing. So I've actually been seriously covering this for two years, and. I'm still not totally convinced it's real, but I know that some of these people were definitely murdered. Mm -hmm. And as of now, my conclusion is I've talked to the families. I've talked to retired NYPD detective Kevin Gannon. I had uh, Kyle Serafin, uh, FBI whistleblower, go out and look at some of the locations with me. I've gone to locations where the bodies are found. I've looked up all this shit. On, I mean, I'm actually doing a legitimate job with this. And then Joel and I went out for Street Gonzo episode six, I think. And... Um, yeah, we we fucking like actually went out at night, got night vision goggles. Dan bought me some night vision goggles and we uh, we found some weird shit. We found like a little homeless dwelling with a bunch of women's clothes in a box, nice and neatly folded up. Very creepy. And then uh, and this wasn't in the episode, but this is why we're going to do a part two. This guy was watching us. He was watching us as we were walking around at like four in the morning at the end of rainy, right by the water where the bodies are disappearing. And he was staring at us. Joel noticed it. I didn't even notice at first. We, I look over, I get him in the night vision and he, he looked like kind of like white Hispanic and he dropped something on the ground and then walks away. And when we went up and went to go see what it was, it was a plastic bag <sighs> full of rocks that were oh all the my. exact same size. And there was a Bible quote in it. And it, he just put it there after staring at us for like five minutes. And we didn't, we, we don't know what to, how to put together that episode what does yet. This mean? The Bible quote makes it confusing because I was like, oh, well, he's just going to use the bag to clock one of you in the head. But now I'm like, well, why is the oh God, Bible verse? That. That's the first thing I thought of. I kind of a weapon. You, you don't need the bag, though. You just take a rock. Well, no, because you have so more weight times. and you have yeah, more, yeah, more, more, like more momentum with yeah. it. Yeah. Huh. Fixed object of the day, uh, well, fixed weapon of the day. Well, well, Joe, <laughs> we wanted to follow him, but I was like, look, if this is like some sort of tweaker. You know, mm -hmm. nobody's out at four in the morning at the end of Rainy Street that's not a tweaker or a serial killer. 
or an insane person investigating or a the journalist. Killer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we wanted to follow him and Joel wanted to follow him. And I was like, well, I might fucking take it slow here, dude. So we, he walked off and then we got in the car and we were trying to follow him in the truck, but we got into a dead end, which is also creepy. And when you're in a headspace like that, mm-hmm. and, and we were trying to take this very seriously when we were driving up to this dead end, we were so like freaked out at this point that as we were driving by, there was a fucking pole behind this tree and Joel was like, ah, fuck. Ah! He thought it was the, the guy. Hey, good for you, Joel. Only the paranoid survive, baby. Dude, I've, I, I gotta tell you fuck this right pussy. now. I've fucking, I have burned through producers doing this. So I went to UT. I graduated four and a half, five years ago, something like that. I started doing man on the street stuff. I had a, a previous producer, Charlie, he was this, like my college buddy who hates me now because we work together too long and I'm a psycho and he's like a normal kid from Westlake. So he quit. And then I had another guy. I had a bunch of people quit as my producers because they basically just couldn't hang. Mm-hmm. And also I used to drink a lot. So I was like, I would consider myself probably have to have been unbearable to be around. But Joel's fearless, dude. And, he, and I'm not drinking anymore. So he's like able to manage to deal with me. <laughs> but it, but he's the only person that could, that could do this. No, I, get, I get it. I was with a girl for four years and I, now I'm finally a, the man she always wanted me to be. But like, you know, she bowed like. Four years ago, so yeah, it's like it just, like five fucking black dudes. Just had to fucking just had to wait me out, babe. I would have got over it, <laughs> dude. That's what I'm saying. Come on, producers, you gotta stick it out. You got hey, <laughs> producers like a girlfriend. They didn't deserve you, Gary. Those producers did not deserve. If they can't handle you at your fucking speed addled heroin k hold fucking drunk worst, they don't deserve you at your sober best. Sober, but still taking amphetamines. I can't not take those. Uh, I've been, I got prescribed those when I was 15, dude. Is that the, what would we call that? We Stanford call it trailer sober. park sober? Is that Stanford what? sober. Okay. Stanford sober. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't not take them because uh, I got prescribed them when I was like 15. So when I don't take them, I'm like, mm. uh, I'm like fucking retarded. Mm. More retarded. That's wild. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, but yeah, so the, the serial killer shit's crazy, dude. I, I, what I think is happening is that people are, so I think that th- this, this is ha- what happened. So there's been people getting drugged in Austin for a long time. It's always been part of the culture here for whatever fucking reason. I don't know why, but I think over time, this rumor was de- developed that there's a serial killer. Right. And then I used to work for a guy named Michael Cargill. We produced this podcast called come and talk it. It was an AM radio show that I converted into a podcast to keep with the times. Cause you know, terrestrial radio is pretty much dead. And we asked the question one day on the show, like two years ago, uh, is there a serial killer in Austin? And then a week later, it fucking was all over the fucking news. It was all over social media. Well, you think you're that. the one that broke the case? I th- no, I don't think we broke the story. I think we, there was something that was like kind of, uh, you amplified it. Yeah. Like, I think we kind of like at, at the same time as maybe a couple of other people just, it just fucking popped Connected off. the dots. Yeah. And, uh, and then like this Facebook group was created and it like blew up all over the news. But my, my point being that, uh, we were just kind of asking the question, like, is this really happening? I was never convinced. I'm still not, but going, going through all these things, I think that there were people being drugged and potentially a couple of accidental deaths or like manslaughter type situations where somebody was drugged and then they died. And I think a couple of these were, um, actual murders Mm. and the bodies are found at the lake. And then people that are actual murderers or like maybe even somebody that had like, cause there's one guy who was shot in the head execution style. And the cops originally said he potentially fell off a bridge, but then later they said it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound, but there was no gun found. And, that's one of the things we're kind of highlighting in that episode, which is total bullshit. It sounds like he was killed execution style. It could have been like a cartel hit or something. Point being, I think with the rumors of a serial killer and everybody freaking out about it and the APD basically dismissing it and everybody that gets found over there, they're like, yeah, it was a drowning or the fucking whatever, suicide. I think people are, that are actually killing people are realizing that the lake is a great place to dump bodies. Mm. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense that they're all killed differently. That's... If you were, it depends if you believe in the the behavioral psychology of mm-hmm, serial killers. Mm-hmm. I don't even really believe in that shit. I mean, some serial killers have done that for sure. But if you're really going to be good at serial killing, you would kill people in different ways. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. It's not like these people aren't aware. Well, that's like um, that that great quote in Mindhunter, which unfortunately was canceled. Oh, such a good show. Such a good show. And, uh, you know, what was it? Ed Gain, the actor that was playing Ed Gain, looks at him and goes, uh, 
you know, and the guy's like, well, this doesn't match. You don't match the profile of serial killers. And, look, and the guy looked at him and goes, it seems to me that you only know the profile of serial killers that get caught. caught. Mm. Exactly. You know. That that makes sense, right? I mean. Yeah, it's not, but also kind of odd that, like, uh, there's a drugging culture here in, dude, in so Austin, Texas. And I got everybody drugged knows on about 6th it? Street, dude. You, you did? got drugged? Yeah, a bunch of people I know have been on 6th Ooh. Street and on Rainey. I got drugged at uh, after a fucking comedy show, and I came to fucking naked on the floor in my room Whoa. and my truck was like in my yard and what? I drove home. Yeah. Uh, like my, my, I was with my friend and she said that I was all fucked up and I started like cussing some people out, you know? And then I, I fucking split and just drove home and, uh, underneath my truck, the fucking, you know, the little like shield that covers your gas tank. It was just split in half. It was like, I had like driven over of something driving home. And then, yeah, it was a mess. I was, and I woke up feeling all fucked up. I went to Target and got a drug test, mm -hmm. and I dropped dirty for uh, benzodiazepines, a Xanax, wow. which I would, which I would never ever take in a million years. Yeah, you like to, the ups? Well, I used to take a lot of them, and I'd black out and like be a complete asshole and like get in fist fights and you know fuck shit up. So somebody, somebody drugged you with Xanny. Eh. Oh, they do that. They and I went to school in Myrtle Beach, and that was really common. Like I bet I was drugged twice while I was in college. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it usually it happens to to women. Yeah. Generally speaking, but in Austin, people get drugged and it's like a game. Like, no, they don't get raped, they don't get murdered, they just get fucked up and like wake up in a bush. Who the fuck's doing this? Usually, it's like dudes just trying to be assholes if they're drugging a guy. Yeah. And obviously, if you're drugging a, a woman, there's a different end goal. Yeah. Uh, also, there was a there was a ring of, of there was like a, like a theft ring that was busted. I think it was a mom and a daughter or something along those lines. It was two women and they were drugging guys and, and, and girls and stealing their shit. Like uh, Cardi B. But it, but there's like, there's so many wow. reasons that. What was you, that? What was that movie? Where well, they were the. Heartbreakers, like, right? With Jennifer Love Hewitt or. No, 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 no. There was, there was a movie with Cardi B, but it was like. Oh, um, uh, was they were the, they were the, they were like the poor. The stripper girls. Yeah, the stripper girls. But it turns out, With like, the actual story of that. What was, yeah, what was the, they were strippers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Hustler crazy. or something like that. Was it hu Hustlers? Hustlers. <laughs> yeah, and they were just like these girls. They were just, hey, you know, screw these guys. Screw these they're guys. Always, they're always treating us like trash. And it turns out that the, the evil white guys in the movie, they were actually like a bunch of Indian guys that these women were just drugging and robbing them fucking blind. Yeah. And then finally, one of them, their wife, was the one that confronted them and was like, what is this hundred? thousand dollars and then he had to like come clean and it was the wife that went to the uh the strip club and was like there's no way that i need i need to see video of him verifying this charge right and they were like this is his signature and they were like absolutely not yeah. not good enough yeah yeah and it, it was like it was a whole thing these girls were like based on a true story i take it dude oh it, for sure yeah, yeah. and it still happens today like i used to go to the strip clubs with my friends all the time and one of my friends had a problem with alcohol and it he would be out cold what they do is they take your thumbprint as soon as you come in so they have proof that 11, you were there 11 does this yeah now. a lot of them do it and it doesn't matter if you are out cold totally drunk if she's still on your lap they're charging and then he left with a bill that was the thousands of yeah. dollars and we're like he was asleep yeah mm -hmm. he was literally asleep yeah it's it's easier to get into the United States from Mexico than it is to get into eleven. Like they Dude. they thumbprint you. <laughs> I they always take just a walk picture. in. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I've never been thumbprinted. They sure. they take a picture of your ID and your credit card, and there's mm -hmm. like they they run it like with a with on, on a copy machine. I'm like, yeah, oh wow, yeah, yeah. copy machine. Yeah, they want you to take your ass out and sit on it. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Dude, strip club. Everybody gets drugged in strip clubs. The strippers get drugged. The fucking guys get drugged. Everybody. It's fucking crazy. I had an places. ex get drugged at a, at a strip club and I had to fucking pick. It was insane. But not my point being that, uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's a problem in Austin altogether. Wow. Is people getting drugged. It's fucking insane. Yeah, it's like a I, big problem. That's why I put my drink in front of you. And I was like, please watch this. Yeah, that shit ain't no joke here. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. He drugged it. Yeah. I was like, well, if anybody's going to drug it, it could be your friend. <laughs> All right. I'll make sure a, you go home safe. This is, this is like, it's nuts to me that this is still happening. Like, this was a big thing when I just first started bouncing back in the day. Like, people were, there was this thing, GHB. Mm -hmm. And it like, yeah. girls would had, they, they had like this. You have nail polish. You, that, that's yeah, what it was. It was like a rave in. ring. They had a rave ring and they would like dip their finger sure in clean. the drink. And if it changed, um, but there was no camera phones back then. Everybody went, there was these big clubs. Everyone went to the clubs to do drugs. 
And then, you know, it all changed, obviously. But this was like, this was in Newark, New Jersey. And it was like, bro, you're, you're going to party in Newark. You kind of get when you sign up for Dude, it. Dude, when, uh, when I was in college, I went to college in Santa Barbara. And it's a huge party school. UCSB. Great Halloween out here. Yeah, yeah, fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, also, they had like the Deltopia stuff. Dude, when I was at, li- when I lived in Santa Barbara, when I was going to school, fucking, they had the Deltopia riots, which was completely insane. And then they also, that fucking guy, Elliot Rogers, like shot the fucking school up. It was nuts, dude. I only lived out there for like a year and a half and like all this insane shit happened. Anyways, uh, the reason I brought up was my buddies and I would, would, uh, we'd put like, it'd be like five of us and we would all know we were doing this, but we would put like five beers and then we'd put a Xanax in one of them and like <laughs> shuffle them around. We all knew we were doing it, yeah. but we were basically like, oh, it's, it was like Xanax roulette. Yeah. And then one of us would just fucking completely black out. And, it's true. You know, Actually, now that I think of it, we did this thing called booth juice in college where it was like normal like everybody puts every liquor ever clear jungle juice yeah jungle juice but then we would throw like a bunch of ecstasy in it oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah oh my god yeah I, we used to think it was funny to black out and now i'm like holy shit i've have brain damage yeah i don't why know why that's the that? goal yeah it's not funny at all <laughs> no it's not fun it's not funny i don't get it it's uh probably like a manifestation of social anxiety right like you're young and these there's women here the women you know, feel it's crazy to me. Like I look at, I'm going to sound so old when I say this, but I look at these like sorority videos that are out there Mm -hmm. and and they're literally just, they're trying to get you to come to school because it's like, we will fuck you. If you come to our school, you will have sex with us. And it's like dancing videos you're talking about. Yeah. Their entire, their entire, they kind of seem demonic to me. Experience (laughs) here. Like their entire necessity to be there. It's like, look, we're going to go on a five year vacation at fuck camp. And then we're going to come out and like, say we're going to be a nurse, but really get a hot fucking husband or something. And it, nurses are the worst. That's all they're fucking selling. And they're, Mm -hmm. they're literally selling, come to college and you'll have sex. And it's like, man, this is, this is what you're going to go into debt for the next 30 fucking years. College is a giant scam. Mm -hmm. You know, turn your fucking pussy into a Petri dish for five years and then fucking come out with $200,000 worth of debt when you're a second grade teacher. Yeah. If you're going to make money fucking, if you're going to want to have a bunch of random sex, make money doing it. Yeah. You're here. (laughs) Oh, so earlier today I was driving around and we came up with a really good idea for one of your next Street Gonzo episodes. You could take it or leave it. Um, But Dan's like, you have to say it on the show. So if you go into an assisted living home (laughs) and you go in and you start to like see if you can pretend to be these people's grandkids and try to leave with a will. Like in someone's will. That's that would just be me documenting <laughs> fraud. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was this, Dan? It was a joint effort. Just <laughs> I think Dan just wants me to end up in prison. Speaking of, what is your bail budget for? Uh, Five thousand dollars. So you do have a Ross bail budget. Ross told me that if I end up in jail. As long as the bail is five thousand dollars or less, he'll bail me out. What type of uh, Delco? Can you look up what type of uh, misdemeanors and maybe class A felonies? I he can't can commit get any more felonies. That will uh, we can get them out for five grand. Yeah, I can't do felonies. Let's yet. see exactly what you what you're able to do. I think fraud might fall under five grand. Because you just oh, gotta, hey, well in that case, well, you just <laughs> I'm in. You just got to put up ten percent of the bail. So if he says he's got five grand, that means you're actually up to a fifty. Or just take 50, the will part bail. out and then do $50, something $50, else bond, with the old fifty thousand dollar bond. I always get confused how that works. I've only had to get bailed out one time, and it was when I got a, a felony. Yeah. Misdemeanors are up to four k. Four k. Any misdemeanor. Any misdemeanor, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I imagine. I imagine what are some misdemeanors, Delco? What? Let's see. What? What, what kind of? What? What kind of things? You ever been arrested? Once. What'd you get arrested for? Uh, it was so stupid. It was so stupid. Um, I was a bartender at this place called Animal House. And <laughs> you were roofing people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it allegedly was owned by like th- this gangster. I did not know that. So the cops were kind of looking for an excuse to shut him down or take him down, make his life more inconvenient. I had no clue. I was just in school trying to pay my bills. So... It was one of those clubs, bars, where you couldn't come in unless you were 21. Like, it was 21 and up. There was a bouncer that is supposed to check the ID at the door. It is not my job to check IDs as a bartender Mm -hmm. because it's supposed to be assumed that you're 21 if you're in the establishment. So it's the beginning of the shift. Is that true? I don't know if that's true. At this particular place it was. Yeah, like, because you, it's a doorman, right? So if you go into a club and you show your ID, you're not doing it once you're in the club. Got you, okay. 
So it's like one of those. So it's not my job to check IDs. So these kids come up to the bar and we're all 21, 22 ish, right? Like there's not much of a difference from 20 or even 19 Mm -hmm. looks wise. So Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that they're just college kids. I, they order some beers. I give them beers. Um, that this was the trick. They actually drank said beers and they, we, the mob dude had cameras everywhere inside that I didn't know either. Um, soon as I do that, the, this lady comes running in and she's like, you're under arrest for serving a minor. I'm like, what are you talking about? Cuffed me, Whoa. cuffed me and put me in the back of a cop car, went to jail, the whole thing. I'm like, I don't know what's happening. I'm not the type of person that gets arrested. The guy bailed me out because he used the footage that they had of the kid drinking the beer and immediately that's thrown out because right. the, the kid was underage. That's crazy. They wow. Up. Yeah. So, so Gary, you can get arrested for public intoxication, trespassing, disorderly conduct, uh, petty theft, <laughs> even simple assault. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or you not can, aggravated, just simple assault. Or you can go to California and not get arrested for anything. Anything. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about <laughs> anything out there. That's a pretty good list right there. I imagine I'm going to get probably arrested for trespassing in some capacity. I, I, I want to go down to the city council and talk about how we need, we need to have free parking in Austin until they fix the homeless problem. And I'm, mm-hmm. I think I'm just going to stand there and not leave. Solid. And get arrested. <laughs> I don't for, really, getting arrested is not really a big deal. Work for, work for primetime Stein, man. Yeah, that yeah. guy, that guy, uh, he kind of mentored my buddy Alex Stringer, who just went viral at the DNC wearing that Rastafarian hat. He's <laughs> a good buddy of mine. <laughs> and he's it. like, he's like, yeah, my, my, my wife's, wife's boyfriend. Or what, or what, yeah, that was whatever so it funny. Is. And they believed it. Dude. I know. That's how fucked the, the culture and he, is. He kept going until like he's, and you can see in his eyes, he's like, he's like, they still at, believe it. Stop me at any time here, guys. That was nuts, man. Yeah. I got a funny story about not getting arrested one time. My buddy Eli and I were, again, in Santa Barbara. We spent the night getting fucked up. Uh, we ran from a cab. We finally get back to the house. And I don't know, for whatever reason, we just started throwing bottles. And, like, we were on the third floor. We started throwing bottles. And, like, it was because the fucking power was out in my buddy's place. And it had been out for, like, a month. Oh, so and nice. all the stuff in the fridge went bad. So we just started throwing it all out the window because we're insane. And it's, like, it's, there's a parking lot at the three floors down. So it's all, like, shattering and it's super loud. Downstairs neighbors call the cops. Cops are banging on the door. And Eli just looks at me and he just goes, he goes, get naked. <laughs> and I was like, all right. I don't know. I just listened. Got butt naked. And I went, ran into the bathroom and he just laid on the floor. <laughs> and I, I went to the bathroom because I was like, oh, God, we're going to jail for sure. I want to take a shit. I don't want to shit in jail. So it's I'm taking a shit. Fucking really, that's really smart. That's good, that's good life advice. Listen, listen. I'm in the bathroom shitting. And I hear the door open. The door wasn't even locked. <laughs> and they open to like Santa Barbara police. And all I hear is Eli jump to his feet like, and he goes, oh, sorry, officer. I must have forgotten my pants. That's what he opened with. <laughs> and, uh, and then they thought we were gay and they let us go. <laughs> I'm dead serious. What? Yeah. It's illegal to arrest the gays in California? Well, think about it. This is literally like that that Family Guy episode. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm trans. Oh, then do whatever you want. Yeah, it's Always. fucking crazy. And this was like 10 years ago, too. Really? Yeah, or maybe eight years ago. I still think it's crazy that you guys got stared down by the Rainy Street Ripper. Did you feel it? Did you feel like this person wants to do me harm? Would you feel like you knew if somebody was a murderer? You've been around enough people. Do you feel like you know? Intuition? I don't know, because I when you're in those situations, you actually get kind of paranoid. I know it doesn't seem serious. Like when you watch the episode, you're like, that was kind of crazy. But it's not like, oh, Gary's going to die. Or maybe yeah. it is. I don't know. I but. thought so. I was concerned for you at the, the end scenes when yeah. the, the couple was there. It's like, oh, my gosh, what are they doing out so late? Well, they they when that guy showed up and started watching us, they left. Mm. They got really? up and left. Yeah, it was definitely creepy. If I was a little bit freaked out, but. You can definitely feel energies, man. Like Dude, energy, you can feel when someone's looking at you for with sure, intention. For sure. I actually am starting to believe in all that weird fucking white girl fucking uh, crystals and shit. Oh, yeah. It's real. So, I'm starting to think it's real. It's all sage. Real. You got you to sage yourself before your next yeah, episode, man. Yeah, fucking rub Palo Santo, not sage. Oh, I'm sorry. Palo Santo's protective sage is clearing. Yeah, pay attention. Maybe man. do both. I don't you know. You can do both. You, you start yeah. with sage and That's then you finish me. with Palo Santo, yeah. Would you be able to know if somebody if somebody was a killer? So... 
I always thought, yes, I thought unequivocally, yes, I would know. Um, I, I, the reason I ask is because we were out in Austin and this guy was very clearly a serial killer. And I was just like, well, I don't know if he was, just, no, that's just drunk guy trying to <laughs> get like, out of here. Hey, get the steal, fuck out. Like club a woman and take her home thing. Like, well, I have a, I have a interesting anecdote on this. The first interview we ever did when this guy named Thad found a body and connect, contacted Jamie Hammonds, the guy, the guy in the beginning of the episode, he works for Dash, documenting Austin streets and homeless. I've done a bunch of fucking work with him on uh, mapping the homeless camps in Austin. We got in New York Post about it. It's other, there's some other serious shit I do. But he got connect, he started investigating the serial killer shit. Long story short, we interviewed this guy, and the guy was so fucking weird. And he found the body, and he said there was somebody watching him. We didn't. This wasn't in the episode. This is what's going to come in part two because this is the real weird shit. He was so fucking weird that it made me paranoid. Mm. And I was like, dude, this guy could be the fucking serial killer. Could legitimately. Yeah. And, and I, and it made me super paranoid, but there's no evidence of that. And you, you never know, I guess, until they're caught, if they catch the right guy even. Mm -hmm. But my point is you get so paranoid in those situations <laughs> that like you have no, there's no way you're going to know if you, if you are talking to a killer. No, no, you just don't know. There's I mean, no I, way. I, uh, I did a whole, I did a whole series with Sammy Gravano who's admitted to killing 18 people and he, we're sitting there having a conversation with him. And nice just guy. Like, huh, cool, funny little grandpa. He's got some weird stories. Then he says the N word on uh, the PBD podcast. And we were all like, Whoa, buddy. Kyle, like we live in a civilized society uh, here. The kill, uh, killing eighteen people is one thing, but uh, that was a full. Drop a hard R. That was a full <laughs> R. What are Whoa. we doing? Okay, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Get sir. the hell out of here, hey, you get, racist! What are we doing here? Yeah, it's weird. That's a weird thing. That word's weird. He's literally describing in detail mm -hmm. how he stalked and murdered eighteen people. But he's still, in his mind, he thinks of it like a soldier. Like he was, like he was just a soldier. Well, it depends who he's orders. killing, right? I guess. I think it does. If you're if you're a gangbanger and you're killing other gangbangers, who gives a shit? If you're a fucking mob and you're killing other mafia soldiers, who sure. gives a shit? Yeah. If you're killing innocent people, that's fucked up. Civilians are off limits. That's a that's a fair point. But I guess the thing is, like, I'm sitting there and in my mind, I'm going, man, this guy. Do I like this guy? This guy's killed 18 people. I can't, I, man, I find him interesting. He's a funny dude. Do like, you know who Gene Borello is? No. no. He was a guy who was up in uh, Jersey and doing all the mafia shit, too. We, I, we did an interview with him on Sloppy Joe's podcast. And same thing. Like, same. He, he ran with all those guys, I believe. I don't remember all the details, but it was the same thing. He's talking about, like, doing, like, all these armed robberies and shit. And I... Like kept laughing. I don't know why. I was like, <laughs> "You're yeah, cool, dude. man." I was like, "Look, I wish I could have the balls to, and the smarts to get away yeah. with that, you know." And it's just a trip. It's a trip sitting in a room with somebody that's like. But then they all like people. all the mafia people ended up ratting everybody out. But it was it the, the reason behind it was sort of legitimate because they like left them. They hung them out to dry, sort of, didn't they? Isn't that's that they, they all they all say that everybody has their reasons, but at the end of the day, the reason is they changed the laws to Rico and we're putting you in jail forever. And for all sorts of, sh right. it's one thing right. when you're looking at like, you know, doing a stretch of five years and it's like, all right, man up, keep your mouth shut. Then it's like, Oh, by the way, um, you're going to jail for 185 years. What? I have, um, I have some stories I'd like to tell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, cause it used to be way different. Do you want phone numbers? Like, what do you want? <laughs> The, the, uh, all those fucking Rico things are hilarious too, because now they're all coming back on the guys that I created know. them. It would be hilarious if somebody actually had the balls to like Rico, some of these politicians. Wouldn't well, it, didn't that almost happen to Rudy Giuliani or something? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, it's fucking crazy. It happened to him because he, oddly enough, he put out on his show, he, and he's the guy that basically invented Rico That's in America and he laid out. In, on his show on AM radio, a full case about why the Biden family and the DNC should should be indicted on RICO charges. Mm. And like two days they later, he got arrested. <laughs> he was like, they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need it's to all so crooked, dude. Yeah. Every, all the pol all mm -hmm. politics are so fucking crooked. It's out of control. There's no fixing that shit ever. I mean, that's sort of, sort of the nature of the game, right? That's the nature of the beast. Yeah, but going back to the other thing, I think women do have intuition, though. Like, if guys, like, we sit here and we can tell when a dude wants to do us harm. Women, they just, if the guy's handsome, they'll let him kill him. Well, Doesn't no, matter. I think that's the thing. It's whether or not they have an intent to harm you. I think women will pick that up. But I have been alone with a murderer, and I had no idea. Like yeah, I don't in think my house. Have good Whoa, you had a murderer in your house? Well, it was before he was a murderer, but, and then he also came back. <laughs> <What? laughs> Wait, 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 
wait, wait, wait, wait, Tell the story. Wait, wait. So, okay, so I am super pregnant, like eight months pregnant. From the murderer? No, not from oh. the murderer. And um, I hired these new cleaning people. It was a guy and a girl. And they came over, it was the very first time, and I'm like, okay, I like to use natural cleaning products, like don't, they brought all their shit, I was like, I don't want to use that, use mine. The lady has a fit, and leaves, and I catch this weird argument on my ring camera, so she just takes off, she's like, I'm not gonna fucking do that, that was, and she lost it. So he comes in, he's like the sweet, the sweet gentle man, mm-hmm. and, the sweet ones. and he's like, I'm so sorry, she had a thing, but I'll do the house. He spent four hours cleaning the house, I felt so bad, and he was so, it was just me and him just talking, and I'm walking around, and we're talking about zodiac signs and all of this stuff. <laughs> You're like, red flag, red flag, red flag. And <laughs> he's, he's like looking at your skin products like, oh, no, very no, nice. he was Put so sweet. And then he leaves and he was supposed to come back the next week. And he's like, hey, instead of coming today, can I just come tomorrow? I had something come up. And I'm like, sure, not, not a problem. So I wanted him to do some power washing outside. He's like, let me just take, I'm going to come and take a look at it. He comes in brand new clothes, brand new kicks, uh, spends an hour looking around. He's like, actually, I don't have time to do it today. But um, I'll come back tomorrow. So he leaves and I end up getting a call and a text. Turns out he had murdered that lady, <laughs> stabbed her to death, rolled her up in a carpet, left her there, took her keys, her car, came to my house as an alibi, and then f- went to flee to Raleigh and they Holy caught him on the interstate. Shit. And I was so so shocked because I was like, but he was such a gentleman. See, dude, look, look, this is why I don't think women should be allowed to vote. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Terrible intuition. They're, you're too nice. So women funny. are too nice. But it's maybe- so funny your takeaway from that story is that women are the problem. The guy... <laughs> Not, I mean, in fairness, the in fairness, the murderer didn't kill her. Maybe, maybe he just had had enough and had non-organic use and so bitch. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. She- and maybe my intuition wasn't going off because I wasn't at risk for anything. I don't know. Yeah, it's like you know. It goes o- back o- to intent. I totally get it. OJ, yeah. OJ you, you lived for forty years before, you know, off in Nicole Brown, and he lived another forty years after and didn't kill nobody. Have we ever thought like I don't know? Maybe she was the problem. Oh God. White women. The white women in L.A., bro. You know. <laughs> he maybe he was planning on killing you because you're the one that set off the series of events that caused him to murder her. Oh, why no. would you let? Oh, think no. about it. Why would you let a strange man in your house for four hours? <laughs> Well, Especially a man who <laughs> cleans for a living, dude. Do you even know a man that cleans? Well, that wasn't. The That's one. why he knew he could get away with murder. <laughs> yeah, or he thought he could at least. Holy shit! He's like, yeah, I'll come back and do some power washing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I'll power wash. Yeah, I'll power, yeah. Fucking do you have any rugs? I love rugs. I'll clean your rugs. <laughs> my God, so dude, a guy killed, uh, killed somebody. I'll clean my fingerprints all off of everything. That's insane. I know. I was really shocked. You're gonna be in like uh, a true one of the, one of those Don't like. Oh. Yeah, you're going to be in like one of those like Discovery ID shows. Somebody's going to play you. Some aspiring actor is going to work for $120 a day. <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah. As the person that was used for an alibi. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, wow. And he got, how did he get caught in rally? Because he took her car. What an idiot. He wow. took her car. Why yeah. the fuck would you do that? I don't know. So this, wow. Mm-hmm. What was it like when you found out that this dude... Like you, you had hired a murderer off. Of I fucking, was so confused and trying to make sense of it. You just left the I don't, last, I don't, the worst Angie's list review of all time. <laughs> no, I, it did make me a little bit like scared because I'm like, I always had this idea. I would know right away, but then you go back and most people I think are capable of doing that. Like, look at, we come from warriors and killers. Everyone that, you know, preceded us obviously had to be a little bit rough and barbaric to be able to create that lineage. So That's I think, still intense when they're in your house for four yes, hours. Yes, I know, but I, I, up, dude. yeah, I think there's, there's a difference too. So it seems like it was kind of a crime of passion. And I think that that's different than psychopathy and serial killers. Mm. So, oh, may, sure. so I think maybe you'd cl- pick that up, but I think everyone in this room is capable of doing it. Oh yeah, I would kill everybody if I thought I could get away with it. Yeah. Well, that's not what I'm saying. I oh. I would do it for self defense. No. Oh, is that? Oh, <laughs> not that. I, thought, I don't like that. I agreed no? with that. So <laughs> not yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Well, yeah. Man, are you the only one that thinks that? Yeah. Well, it depends, right? I mean, I would not, never not kill. You, I would never I kill an innocent person. Nobody's innocent, Gary. No. Nobody's innocent. That's a good way to look at it. That's a really good way to shirk responsibility for your actions. All right. Don't look at me like that. I don't know. I mean, I need to reassess my friends. Dude, I. What, what you, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think certain 
crimes are justifiable with a uh, fucking death penalty. So it, I sort of believe in the death penalty for certain things. So I don't have a problem with somebody that deserves to be killed to be killed. Now, here's where I get weird. I, I don't believe in the death penalty. I don't think the state has the right to take any uh, of its yeah, citizens' lives. Yeah, that's a good lives. fuck, dude. That's a good point. What about maybe giving, not, maybe at the at the local level or something? I what about know. giving the power to like the surviving members or something to That's choose fair, yeah. to so, choose? Well, no. So say that um, maybe there's a pedophile and it's proven, right? Proven. Instead of saying that you can get euthanized for that by the state, it's like the family of that kid gets to take care right. of it, and they get to keep your balls like on a like on a mantle. whatever they want to do. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'd be all right with that. I'd be all right with the families of traumatic events. Like instead of the jury, the family gets to choose the sentencing. Yeah. I'd well, what's okay a fucking that. jury anymore? I yeah. n- I don't even. Who know. wants a trial by fucking jury? Yeah. No, that's fucking, scary. The country is full of fucking idiots now, dude. You make a point, man. Seriously, you make a I, point. I would not. I've I've had to get a trial by judge a handful of times, and I actually beat a case in Austin for fighting in public. And it was trial by uh, judge. And the reason I beat it was because when, so I was on 6th Street and I was walking off Trinity to get into an Uber. I was with my buddy and these, this like couple of Indian dudes were walking by me. I was laughing at something my buddy said and the guy thought I was laughing at him. And he's like, fuck you, you bitch. And I was like, what? Who is that? What the <laughs> hell is your problem? And he kept going, coming at me and I was like, hey, I'm going to kick your ass if you get close to me. Yeah. And then something happened I don't really remember who swung first, to be totally honest. It doesn't matter now because I beat the case. But he pushed me or I pushed him or something. And then he swung at me a couple of times and I just bobbed and weaved, socked him in the face and then slammed him on the ground. Cops were across the street. Lit, what, they saw the second part of it happen. When we gave our statements, I said that he swung on me. And when he gave the statement, I, I said I didn't even swing on him. Like, I just was like, I didn't do shit. And when he gave his statement, he said we both swung on each other. So it was we both said he swung and only one of us said I swung. So I went in court. They were the judge was like, "Well, we got to throw this out." And the <laughs> cop that was there, or the the what do you call that guy? The fucking the the lawyer that's trying to put me in jail. He was like, well, "Yeah, I got the cop here. He's gonna he's gonna give a statement." Blah blah blah. And I was like, "You're full of shit, dude. What are you talking about? There's no way that the the cops don't give a Did shit." Did you represent about this. yourself? Yeah, and You're I just beat out it. here like fucking Charlie Day. Yeah, raw <laughs> dog, dude. And then I tried fucking represent myself in custody court, and that didn't work. But that's a whole other beast. Honestly, 50 50 is not so bad. Well, I've you got to go back to court one more time. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I've been arrested like 15 times and I've lost every single time except that one time. I'm, I'm, I'm like one <laughs> okay. for 15. All right. Well, then I'm, maybe get I would get, not get, recommend get this guy a lawyer. Maybe yeah. Yeah. in custody court. It's especially heinous because it's the whole thing's rigged against the dad. Yeah, it's fucking insane. Dude. Mm-hmm. It's nuts. If you got a baby mama, that's a fucking bitch and doesn't want you to see your kid. Get a good lawyer. Get, get a fucking expensive 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollar lawyer. Or if if it's just something where you're trying to, you know, like negotiate the semantics of it, you could probably represent yourself. But in my situation, I was fucked. I also had my stripper ex-girlfriend as a character witness, which probably didn't help. But I was gambling, you know, I was r- r- throwing the dice with that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She actually did a good job. Yeah. Seriously, she did a really good job of like being like, yeah. Your this Honor, is- my character witness is here and you can see. By comparison, I'm not nearly as bad as she is, yeah. so. <laughs> I don't know. It probably made things worse because she was way hotter than my baby mama. No, it's really sad that baby they do that mid. because no one gives a shit about the kid. The system doesn't care. The mom in that situation doesn't care. Like, you start to use your kid as a weapon to get back at your Dude. your spouse, which is so weird because just because someone doesn't make a good love match doesn't mean they're not a good parent. Mm. Yeah, it was a, a lot point. of that, and it was a lot of... Uh, Gary's running a whorehouse out of his out of his studio at his house because I interviewed like strippers and porn stars and stuff. Gary's, uh, you know, a drug addict. Gary's an alcoholic. Gary's this and Gary's that. like all sorts of crazy shit. And then like even unrelated stuff from our relationship that had nothing to do with anything. They would take like a little like situation that happened and then just exacerbate it, make up a bunch of shit. I mean, they dude, she literally was making shit up that didn't even happen. But I didn't have a lawyer, so I had no way to even remotely uh, properly defend myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, and I, it got to the point where I was just like scoffing. Also, they threw out all of my evidence. Is there public defenders? Per, per, for, but that's a civil case, right? Like, that's no, a, yeah, you, you don't get, can you get a public defender no. for, no, I, at least I don't, I didn't do it the right way. Whatever I did, I fucked it up really fucking bad. My son's paying the price for it. It sucks. 
That's brutal, man. Yeah, that's the the family court system is broken completely. Yeah, I said that to someone on a podcast. She's like this new lawyer, so she took it really person, personal. And I was like, the whole thing is like a, a Ponzi scheme. Because the, even if you're in states that allow mitigation, they still try to push you to lawyers and to get you to like claw your uh, each other's eyes out. So yeah. it has nothing to do so with the lawyers being make amicable. Money, right. And the lawyers make money, and the lawyers are friends with the judges, so they mm-hmm. drag it out so they both make money. Mm-hmm. And then, honestly, what it really boils down to is it's a form of like modern – wage slavery where they can take money out of your paychecks for child support. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How the fuck does that make any sense? Well, and then they put interest on that and they tax it and all that bullshit. Yeah, they can garnish your wages. We have so, so we have a couple of restaurants and a lot of our line cooks are in that situation where they don't have custody and, and their wages are getting garnished. And then you see how much they're working and then you're seeing what they leave with. And it's not a look, it's not enough to even think about living, even if you have or roommates, improving your situation. You can't. And then you have to keep or doing getting that. a lawyer to get your kid back or something or like that. spend time with your kid. Right. You so know, that's all you're making. There's no yeah. time. And then you got it. Yeah. And then you, <laughs> and it's based on a percentage. So here's, what's really crazy. This is what I think the craziest part of the whole thing is. Child support is set up by percentage. So 20% of your income goes to your kid. That means that they are putting a different dollar sign on each child. As if certain children are more valuable or better than other children based off of what the parent takes in. That makes no sense. It should be every child should get the same amount of allotted amount of money for child support because every child in the system of equality should be considered equal. So it should be a set amount. Or if you are below a certain uh, income bracket, you shouldn't even be having to pay child support because it's no. not even possible. No. Is there any There's auditing? There's a clip, dude. Is Boom. There, yeah, is mm-hmm. there any auditing that the the money that you're giving is being used for the child? What do you think? No. I can Fuck tell no. you n- no. Fuck no. Cause my, so my dad was in that situation and mm-hmm. he, there's three kids that he was paying and he was like a cop. So not a ton of money. And I can tell you there were times where I didn't eat dinner. You know what I mean? And so no, no one's checking to see where that money goes. My, I, my mom would go out to like these really nice restaurants with yeah. her boyfriend and I would not eat dinner. And really? you know, what's really yeah. crazy in my situation is that my baby mama and my son live with her fucking parents who are loaded. Mm-hmm. That's how she got the attorney. I think you need to look at each case. And now as she it fucking is. works for the attorney that represented yeah. her. That's a conflict Whoa. of interest. Yeah. The whole thing's a scam, dude. I can't wait till I get fucking blow this show up and get famous again. Oh, it's pretty back. crazy, man. Because the, uh, the only reason I do anything that I do, by the way, the only reason I do any of this shit is so that I can just get fuck, make a bunch of money and get a custody lawyer. That's all I fucking mm-hmm. care about. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. I hope you do. Yeah, my they they my aunt used the system really really fucking nefariously against my uncle, where she had a live in boyfriend, and after seven years in Jersey, it's considered a Commonwealth marriage. So the fucking guy after six years would like go get a a, a uh, an apartment. So that she would have to keep getting <laughs> alimony from him. Oh my god! Yeah. So for like twenty years, my uncle was I paying. Right back. Yeah, alimony is another kind of <laughs> sort of scam. It's an yeah. outdated practice. I think it, it probably used to make sense because women didn't work as much. Sure. Yeah. But now it makes no sense at all. Yeah. I, and Delco, you can look this up. I think I heard a stat that fifty percent. It, maybe it's a little less, maybe it's 40%, but whatever it is, Delco can let us know. 50% of all of the money in divorces goes to the attorneys. So when people say, oh, I'm not going to lose half of my money, it's actually way more than that oh, yeah. because you split 50% after whatever you pay the attorneys. Dude, that's that's my, that's like, that's why, like I said, that's why I kind of just went into the media industry and was like, because if I would have just gone and got a regular job, I'd be they'd be taking the money out of my paycheck anyway. I mean, I'd be in the same boat. Why not just do what I love? You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. You I don't know. Divorce? What's up? Divorce. Divorce, yeah. Average divorce attorney is about 11 grand. Yeah, but then they get, so the average divorce attorney is 11 grand, but I, I think they get like a third. There's some that, that do it on spec now or on contingency, and then whatever the- If they win, yeah, type shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they get like a third, and then the other two thirds are split between the, the two parties. I think that that's, um, I could be wrong though, but I, I, I remember reading that. Why would anybody, why, what, what's the benefit to a man getting married anymore? I don't think there is one. Well, 
Yeah, I think um, there's well, there's tax benefits. There's some tax benefits, and uh, that's honestly probably a great question for for Candace when she comes back. But uh, I, I do look. Are you, we still on alimony? Yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah. I was he, asking. He just asked a great question. Go ahead, I propose it again. What is is there any benefit to a man getting married anymore? So alimony is one of those scary things that everyone talks about, but it's really rare nowadays. It's very difficult to get. I do know this is going to be kind of funny to some people. I know a porn star that her husband's trying to get alimony from her, mm. which is just how much of a beta are you? That's oh, disgusting. Oh, my ex-girlfriend did. Oh, really? She got a, her ex-husband got like half her her shit. That's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah, like, I think the alimony thing has sort of thinned out, but I just mean Well, it's, it has But no, but as far as benefits to marriage go, I think I think if you're going to have kids, I think absolutely. I think you want something that's kind of stabilizing that relationship or locking it in place and having someone be responsible for that kid financially. Um I think it's if you're in a relationship, it's really easy to break up. It's really hard to get divorced. In North Carolina, for example, you have to be in arbitration for like a year before you can actually get divorced. That's insane. Yeah, it's just a requirement. So what if you're getting hit? I know, and the, I know cases where that was. Oh, one of my friends was in that. Stick situation. it out for another six months, babe. Why? She, why is the government even involved in marriage, anyways? I thought that was originally. It was like marriage was a fucking no, sacrament of the church. Right? No, like, that came later. Actually, that's a huge misconception. It was. Um, it was always a legal. I don't know document, and then it became religious later. Is that right? Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that it's definitely antiquated in many ways. I think that there are some important things, some benefits. I think there it's good to incentivize two family households. There's a ton of data that shows that kids thrive in households where they have a father and a mother. Mm -hmm. And if you remove the father, you mean two parent households? Two parent households. Yeah, 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 two families getting poly all of a sorry. sudden. Sorry, yeah, uh, but <laughs> but there, there's. Um, Lesbians divorce at like 75%. Oh, they have so, the highest divorce yeah. rates. They have the highest domestic violence rates. That's the fucking clip I was telling you about that it got like 30 million views on Instagram. I just, all I said was um, the, the, out of all demographics of couples, lesbians have the highest rate of domestic violence and people fucking freaked Lost out. Lost their mind? Yeah, but That's it's true. Truth. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's lesbians, hetero, and then gay couples. Yeah, because I think, I think a lot, of, I think a lot of the times lesbian women, not all of them, but a lot of them, they are uh, manifesting what they think a, is masculine energy and what being a man is. Yeah. And they think that that's like, you know, I'm going to get cool fucking dyke haircut and beat my fucking chick or whatever. Yeah. It's weird. That's, yeah, that's, I don't think that's Yeah, true masculinity is knowing you can beat on somebody and choosing not to. That's, being that's, dangerous and, and keeping it yeah. in check, having self-control. That's mm -hmm. why I don't drink, dude. Because when I used to get drunk, I would have no self control, and I, not, I wasn't like violent, but I would get fucking. No, I was. I don't trashed. drink whiskey at all anymore. Yeah, you don't drink. I don't. I don't drink hard liquor anymore. I drink beer. I started I off can micro dose not, my stuff. I started off not drinking whiskey, and then uh, I was only drinking beer, and then I would drink beer, and I'd still get like fucked up and do a bunch of drugs. My problem was I would get drunk, do a bunch of drugs, yeah, or I would get fucked up and like drunk drive or just destroy shit. Like sure. I thought it would be funny to like start, -stop like, start a life fire in a machine, dumpster, baby. <laughs> Yeah, I was. I never got in a lot of fights. I don't like fighting. Uh, I've like broken my knuckle a bunch of times, mm -hmm. and and I got some injuries. I got occipital nerve damage from me and my buddy getting in a fist fight in the street one time. And I, I don't see the point in fighting unless I'm having to uh, defend somebody that like that I know. Even mm -hmm. I'm probably not going to step in in a fight with somebody I don't know if I can get yeah. beat up. Sure. Yeah, because you never know how far it's going to go. And you also don't know what's going on. Dude, I was on Rainy, Rainy Street back in the day before it got all built up, and I was with my buddy Tay. He's my, my roommate now, and he's mixed. He's half black. He's probably like 30% black, let's be honest. He's a light-skinned fella. Mm. But we were down there, and he was bartending, and after the shift was over, we were saying bye. I was walking one way. He was walking the other way. Uber pulls up. Door opens. Big fucking giant corn-fed white dude. Door hit, hits uh, his truck. And he gets out and he's like, hey, man, you hit my truck. And the dude's like, no, I didn't. And he he just was they got in an argument, basically. And Tay was saying, yeah, you did. And the guy goes, hey, how about you talk to me like a normal person and not a at hard R? <laughs> and Tay was like, what'd you say? And he said, you heard me hard R. And I didn't hear exactly what was going on, but I kind of was like, what the hell? And Tay slaps him in the face. But this dude was huge. And Tay's like a little skinny, light skinned punk, you know? And uh, dude fucking grabs him 
and I ran over and I hit him as hard as I could. I knocked him out completely cold. And but he was so big, he falls over onto Tay. Tay's like stuck underneath him, can't get off of him. I'm hitting the guy in the side of the head, and then somebody out of nowhere runs over and just starts fucking kicking the shit out of my head with some mm. cowboy boots on, split my entire head mm. open. And there was like, we got up. I was ready to scrap. But there's blood pouring down my face. Point is that those, that guy kicked Point me in is, the head. Point is, I knocked out well, the big son, bitch. You don't know who's <laughs> the good the, the guy. The guy, guy, the guy yeah. that kicked me in the head. Yeah fucking didn't realize he was kicking the wrong guy in the head yeah, yeah. you know because mm -hmm. he didn't know those guys but he i think they thought we were jumping that dude or something mm. but that's why i don't fucking stick my fucking nose in nobody else's business because sure. you never know what the fuck's really going on mm -hmm. you well, know yeah well when you you know when you're sober you can make that decision when you're drunk it's just like exactly it's yeah rock and roll yeah but going back to the marriage thing man just how would you fix it how, like as a guy that's not been married and as a man that, that, you know, is very wary of it because of, of what you guys just discussed, how would you, because I do see the benefits of it, but like. It's the, picking the right partner. Yeah, that's but I think it. it's also a cultural thing. I don't know if there's any fixing it at this point in America. Maybe go to another What if country. we made it, what if we made it like. Marry a Mexican one. 10 years. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There's something, there's Seriously. something, there's something to the passport bro thing where, you know. American women are just real difficult. Especially man. white women in America. They're Tough, so difficult. Very, Impossible to please. They're annoying. They're they're the most annoying people. They in want my <laughs> they want a lot for providing very little. And they'll provide shit. Yeah. Mostly. Especially in South Florida. It's it depends very, what your what what demographic you're you're in, but like the ritzy higher end women in this country, they don't provide shit. They're just hot. That being only said, so man, far. the, the mm -hmm. most successful people I know. Their marriage is strong, and it's it's a superpower. I agree. It's actually. a superpower, but I think it's really hard to come across that. I think you've got to kind of build a foundation for yourself. Yeah, the, the, prior. the right woman is is a fucking cheat code, man. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah, you know, uh, maybe it's. Uh, I think I think it should be term limits, like anything else. Like, all right, we're coming up on ten years. We're we gonna we, we, we gotta we gonna renew. We gotta <laughs> renew. Let's vote on it. Yeah, like you know, I, I guarantee you, everybody's gonna start being real nice to each other in that ninth year. They start seeing real estate prices all of a sudden. Uh, dude, I do think that there's like we're talking about alimony. If it really is not as much of a thing anymore, then I think you're gonna see marriages the the success rate probably go up because I think a lot of the times there were marriages where the woman's unhappy and they're like, fuck it, I'm out. And, Cause they know they can get shit. If you don't think you can get shit out of it financially, mm -hmm. then there's not as much of incentive. There was, there was for years, it seems like incentive to get divorced. No, now it, it makes both people suffer financially. And I think it actually hits women harder. Good. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, why are prenups like not mandatory? I think everyone should have one. I women agree. bring up the concept of a prenup to a woman and I think, uh, no. watch them Nuclear no, muscle. yeah, but dude, if you're gonna George be in a successful Bush marriage nuclear. anyway, you're gonna have to be a kind of guy that's gonna stand his ground. I mean, yeah, no woman's gonna stay married to some fucking asshole that's like, well, I'm scared Walked to talk about a prenup. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and if your bitch is gonna go crazy, <laughs> look at me. If your woman's gonna go crazy, <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. I, what, what I meant to say was, <laughs> if your if your woman's gonna go crazy over you talking about a prenup, anyways, don't marry her. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah, I agree. Because the thing is that person's letting their emotions get in control of their decision making. Right. So what do you think is going to happen at one of the most dramatic worst thing, days of your life, right? They're not going to be thinking cool and collected. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's for. It's just right. to say, let's make an agreement while we're happy and love each other as to what it, we would like this to look like if it doesn't work out. It makes not, sense to me. I'm a man. I'm logical. Not Talk, talking end. to another woman. It's like, are you I thinking about breaking up before we even you get know what's, married? You know what's funny is uh, my fucking, my parents are like the opposite of what uh Mar like they're they, they're fucking divorced. They both been married a couple times. Uh, my dad's Italian, and he's all fucking all over the place emotionally. And my mom was the one that was like logical and analytical. Mm -hmm. She does market research. All she does is numbers. Mm -hmm. So that was what I got growing up to look at. And they both have a bunch of failed relationships. And it's just like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Everybody in my family's been divorced. Everybody, and some of them multiple times. Mm -hmm. My grandma's been married six. I think she's on her seventh husband. A romantic. Is that hopeless, no, hopeless, she's fucking a crazy. A hopeless romantic. <laughs> a hopeless she was a she was like a go go dancer in the sixties. So and she, and videos she are crazy. didn't happen. <laughs> let's see what let's see what Gam Gam look like, there's bro. Old, let's see old, what Gam Gam look like. Hey, you want to talk about some titties, dude? Uh, <laughs> still, really, still. She's Gam Gam there. just out there milking. Shout out, Grandma. Yeah, hey, they're real and they're yeah, fantastic. you're right. Maybe they don't make them like they. Used they to. do not make them like they used to, man. <laughs> I well, I've been I've been in Nashville. 
I was in the last three weeks. I've been in Nashville. I've been in Orlando. I've been in Austin. I, I, I've not. I've seen. Dude, I've not seen one pair. You know of what? Double D's. I bet you part of it is because uh, back in the day, a lot more women were having kids, and they would make mm-hmm. them have bigger tits. You yeah. think that's what it is? Potentially, I don't know. I'm not the titty expert. Well, women just I'm don't. More of an ass. I grew they don't, a they don't cup drink and a half anymore. Huh? I grew a cup and a half. You grew a cup and a half mm-hmm. when you had the babies. Yeah, I'm a triple D. What? Bam! It's stupid. I know. I have my back hurts a lot. Aww. <laughs> dude. Yeah. It, Speaking of f- back pain from tits, I put the fake tits <laughs> on at that DreamCon, and it gave me legitimate back pain mm-hmm. for days, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Sometimes I think I still haven't gotten over it. No, it's been tough. I, <laughs> I hope some stem, I hope. stem stem cells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do the, the, st- the hand and stone. Have you, you, have, you, have, I, have you seen the fake tits that I have? I have not They're seen big. the fake tits. Can I bring them out on here? Is that yeah. going to get us no. fucked on YouTube? Oh, uh, we can blur it out. We'll okay. blur it out for the YouTube. For the Patreon, they just go ahead and do on, on the OF. <laughs> you just, you'll just throw them up. This full episode with the titty smack is yeah, on the we, OF. Yeah, we, we could do that. Yeah. That'd be an interesting uh, test. Yeah. Uh. Oh wow! But you gotta throw them on. No, I don't want to put them on. It's There's gonna be a lot of there. editing. Wow! Yeah, check them out, dude. Jordan's like, it's okay. I'll... I gotta tell you, this, this, this would do it in that underground slap fight. Yeah, this would get yeah. it done. Are these filled with water? <laughs> what's going on here? We were hiding that from the cameras, Gerard. Yeah, oh. I didn't want to give Delco extra work. It's fine. Do, did you see it on camera? Yeah, look oh. at you. But it's, just, there's nothing. There's nothing to see. Okay. I think you could probably have the fake boobs on camera, actually. What do you think, Delco? Yeah, they're fine. Okay, okay yeah, then don't worry about oh, it. Oh, they're fine? Much. Cool. Who, who did it better? <laughs> who wore it best? <laughs> who did it better? They feel real, though, right? Do they? No. I think they feel real. Oh, they smell like shit, bud. Yeah, it's all my sweat, dude. <laughs> I mean, I haven't washed them. (laughs) Fuck. Yeah, throw them on the ground over there, dude. Fuck. Oh, God. Okay. What else did you have on your... uh, On my list? Your list of notes. Yeah, let's see. Um, We had... Oh, well, thoughts thoughts on Trump releasing the names on the Epstein list. I don't think he'll actually do that. I don't think he's going to either. If it benefited him, he would have done it I don't think he's allowed to. I think that there's someone above him that's going to be like... You sure you're gonna, you're gonna do that? <laughs> you sure. think, I mean, you they, think there so? was an attempted assassination. Yeah, like bullet. Whoop. You know, a lot of people we interviewed about that thought it was fake. A lot of people I talked to too. They thought it was like a set, like a like they staged it you, as if that's. I mean, it's. I don't. I don't. That doesn't seem possible to me. But I guess anything's possible. I gotta tell you, the the guy that got shot in the chest fucking really committed to the role. He's dead. He committed Ugh. to it. That's commitment to the bit. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, that's nuts. It, It makes no sense, but people have truly lost their mind. And then I have a clip that I sent in, and it's this new movement of hot girls eating raw meat or eating steak. So it's working for them. They're getting a ton of followers. Yeah, they're trying to like sexualize slash capture the male audience of the whole carnivore movement and the like the right wing alpha movement or like red pill. I I heard somebody recently say that the the carnivore diet people are the new vegans. Because it's their whole personality. It? Yeah, I don't That's know. I, I don't Delco, know. can you play that clip? What, dude? She's got tits right there. Yeah, she does. Her whole page is titties. That's, you said there's no more tits. There's tits. It's good. So maybe, maybe, maybe we got to eat more raw meat. See, look at that. That one's the aggressive part. She's just grabbing that ribeye and just chomping into it. Raw, oh, it's raw. Raw. Oh, I, I guess I. So is this hot? Part. No. Is this appealing? Would you f- hit follow? I mean, she's hot. I she's no. yeah, she's pretty, but I don't get. Look at oh, it's making me nauseous. Is, is yeah. eating raw food not bad for you anymore? Well, no, you can have tartare, but the the meat is prepared in a way that you can eat it raw. Like you can't just eat any steak raw. It has to be a certain kind of steak. Yeah, somebody was just telling me they eat chicken raw in Japan now. No, no, like, no, no, dude, no, no. I, no, I swear to God, there's like chicken tuna or like chicken uh, sashimi. No, <laughs> just a no. I've eaten uh, chicken that was not totally cooked all the way, and I think I've developed an immunity to <laughs> raw chicken. <laughs> I'm an elf. That's, no, that is real. So there's there were these preppers, these hillbilly preppers that I watched on this show, and they were trying to get ready for like the end of times, and they're like, "Well, I want to. I don't want anything taking me down, including salmonella." So what they would do is they would start with tiny pieces of raw chicken, and it would get like to bigger and bigger portion sizes, and they would actually start to rot the chicken. So they would have the what? chicken start to rot, and they 
they would take these nibbles of it and they did, they build an immunity to eating raw or spoiled meat because they're like, if it's the end of times I need to go get roadkill, I need to be able to eat that and not die. I could. These guys were like committed. So what? Yeah. I could see eating, eating, uh, uncooked chicken to a degree developing an immunity to it, but raw food, raw or uh, uh, spoiled food is rotted is that chicken. Real? Yeah. They said it worked why, why, and they why, built up to being why? able to eat an entire chicken breast. That was raw. That was rotten. He, I, I said, why? Cause they think that if the apocalypse comes and maybe they can't hunt or they don't have access to fresh food, that if there's roadkill or spoiled meat or like leftovers, like sure. they can scavenge and eat that and not die. Theoretically speaking, couldn't they just slowly build up their immunity then during the apocalypse? Well, no, because well, it, it could happen tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. Be they're preppers. <laughs> you, don't, yeah. you don't get the same credit. Uh-uh. Do you think we're going to live to see the apocalypse? I hope not. I will. I've been, I've been, I've been prepping. Well, the rest of you die off. Well, I'll it's be, like zombie I'm land. I'll be everything. I'll be no, you right. like, I'm like, I'm like, I'll be turning you into long pork there, <laughs> Scary Gary. I'll be eating part of my leg. <laughs> Dude, I wouldn't eat me, by the way. I probably actually have a ton of diseases. It's like a no, bear. No, you're immune. If you eat like a spoiled bear, then you can track the disease that the bear had. Well, if you eat a human being. Would I get his immunity if I eat him? Nah, it's not. Is no, that like a superpower no, you would get you'd get sick. Oh. <laughs> no. Also, if you eat a human being, you get that fucking disease. Mm-hmm. Uh what? It's uh, it like almost is like a zombie disease. If I eat your brain, do I get your memories? <laughs> kind of. So I learned Whoa. I kind of learned this. So the, your your brain what? cells are spread throughout your body. So if you're a cannibal and you start to eat the person that those like random brain cells that are throughout the the other person that you're consuming will attach to different parts of your body and Where it'll actually fuck did you make you look go crazy. It'll give you psychosis. What? Yeah. Well that uh, it, you don't get their memories, though. No, not their memories, oh. but the, you're, you are getting their brains, their brain cells. So yeah, yeah, no, that's what happened. That's why. That's yeah. where that fucking whole myth of zombies comes from. Is, is from people eating. It's cannibalism. Is that right? Yeah, and they, I don't. I don't think we're going to experience uh, the apocalypse in our lifetime, but I do think that we have the potential to live through a civil war type event in the United States. Mm. I think that's totally possible. Yeah, I can see it happen. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's being done on purpose, I, I, mostly from external, you know, outside forces. Like, like there was just a Chinese spy that was found in that the governor of New York's cabinet. That's correct. And, and she was uh, also she's not. I think she was the chief of staff, and she also worked for a U.S. congresswoman as well. Yeah. yeah. And and I think there's a lot of stuff like that happened. There was that fucking Russian spy whale. There's Chinese spy balloons. There's fucking COVID was from China. I mean, that was manufactured in a lab. They pretty much admitted that now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of people trying to force the U.S. to infight and implode. Yeah, because open it's border society, them. APAC. I that mean, shit's it's insane. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, the the open borders, the border's out of control. Mm-hmm. That shit in Colorado is real. It's insane. That'd be an interesting episode. Holy yeah. shit, it would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, we would, that's a scary that's one to do. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't know. I'd like well, the, the, yeah, look, the it's definitely external forces. Mm-hmm. It's definitely inorganic. And you can tell it's inorganic because we don't feel it in everyday life. We go out, we go to the bar, we go to the show, and everybody's happy, everybody's fine. Different colors, different genders. You were talking in the car about how you think, you know, the liberals in Texas get a bad rap. And they're different. Yeah. yeah, they're cool. They're libertarian. They're cool. Yeah, so. they're cool here. Yeah. You know, the other day somebody was saying that the the media and all the propaganda and the news that we see, they're not lying to us. They're instructing us. Mm. I wish I could remember who said that, but I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah, I think it's all by design. They're constructing and they're, a reality that just doesn't exist. They're, um, they're baby stepping us toward our own oblivion in the U.S. and in, in, in Western society in they general. They do not want the United States to exist. They don't want the concept of freedom. Yeah, mm-hmm. Dude, there's the, the concept of the nation state right. they don't want. They yeah, want global federalism. They want a one world government where someone in Brussels who we've never met is going to tell us exactly what we can do, what we can't do. They want they want to they want to look at a spreadsheet and they want to see we have this, we have that, we have this, we have that. Is that like 3D printed? It's, yeah, it's Trump. That's so funny. <laughs> no, I think you're That's right. So funny. I think you're totally yeah, on point. We have to do this again. We're because, wrapping it up. We, yeah, we have to go to Infowars. Gary, this was awesome. Do you want to tell the people where they can find your show, check you out, how they yeah. can support you? It's Fridays, 5 p.m. Street Gonzo on Drinking Bros. And my Instagram is the.scary.gary. And that's where we do all like the updates and clips and shit like that. Yeah, this was awesome. 
you're great. I hope the show is a huge success and please stay safe because sometimes I'm like watching this like, oh my God. No promises. Yeah, no promises. We got it. We, we just want to make sure we get the best shit, the most real shit raw. Um, you know, we obviously edit the, we, we, Joel adds a bunch of crazy shit to it to make it more entertaining, but it's all real shit. Mm -hmm. It's really what we do. Awesome, man. Yeah, thank you. The last real journalist alive, yeah. the scary Gary. God, and dude. and once once again, let's just can we all just fucking appreciate how fucking great Candace looks before we leave? My God. <laughs> What a, what a fantastic, this one, this episode's going to get some views. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. everybody's going to be really upset when they see me and you in it, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're going to say, who's these, who are these queers? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Let her talk. <laughs> All right, guys. Have All a right, great one. Bye, everybody. Bye.